recently. Uh, we had a very successful visit of uh, external affairs minister, Dr. Jay Shankar, to, to Russia. And uh, uh, it is a good opportunity for us today to discuss it, especially in the view of that uh, um, our engagements on multilateral platforms are continuing. Uh, we are uh, suggesting that we should uh, structure our discussion today uh, to start with uh, uh, the opening remarks and, uh, of uh, His Excellency Ambassador of Russia to India, Mr. Nikolai Kudashev. He will present his vision and his vision on uh, outcomes and assessments of uh, the visit. Then we will proceed to the questions and answer session. So if you don't mind uh, about these housekeeping arrangements, uh, let us invite His Excellency Ambassador to present his vision. Your Excellency, please. Thank you so much. Dear friends, Sadio, namaste. It is my privilege to welcome all of you on such a remarkable occasion after a very successful trip of Dr. Jaya Shankar to Moscow on July 7 to 9. The visit was a very timely follow-up for the Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov trip or visit to New Delhi on April 6 and demonstrated how much attention both sides were paying to satisfy the common desire to maintain strong dynamics of bilateral high-level contacts, which is especially important in view of preparation for the next big events planned later this year. They include both trade and economic, as well as defense intergovernmental commissions meetings, the first two plus two ministerial meeting later this year, and of course, the summit. Undoubtedly, it will be a new, huge cornerstone of the special and privileged strategic partnership, which is really unique. Details of possible visit of President Vladimir Putin are being discussed. However, epidemiological situation, situation will be a very important factor, to put it frankly. At the same time, our leaders um, are planning to jointly participate in BRICS under the Indian presidency, in BRICS summit under the Indian presidency coming very soon in September, and the SCO summit, summit in September too as well as G20 summit in October. Overall discussions involving, along with the Minister Lavrov, our Deputy Prime Minister Yuri Borisov, and Chairman of the International Affairs Committee of the State Duma, Lower House of Parliament, Mr. Leonid Slutsky, were comprehensive and forward-looking, based on mutual trust, respect, understanding, and support. The progress and new developments in key areas, atomic and hydrocarbon energy, defense, space, industry, trade, finance, connectivity, innovation and technology, sharing healthcare, education, along with incredible mutual interest to promote just and equal and equal multipolarity, naturally make us major global partners. We are very successful in supporting the international effort to fight against COVID-19. It's a matter of pride that Sputnik vaccine being part of the Indian vaccination campaign is gradually increasing its partnerships here. The launch of the Sputnik light vaccine in India is also expected soon. We are committed to continue a discussion on mutual recognition of vaccination certificates. A lot of attention was paid to promote further coordination in the United Nations Security Council, which India will be chairing, by the way, very soon, this August. We welcome the Indian desire to increase its involvement in the Arctic Council under the current Russian presidency. 
We are looking forward to the next RIC, Russia, India, China ministerial to be held by India soon. The minister said detailed and pragmatic conversations on the issues of regional stability and security in Eurasia, the Middle East and the Asia Pacific. Clearly the situation in Afghanistan was dominating. We are both supportive of intra-Afghan talks based on commitments of the parties to ensure that the future government is inclusive. It's critically important to support Afghans in making their country independent, sovereign, united and democratic. After the Western troops started their speedy withdrawal, regional efforts are becoming even more important. As you know, these days, Tajikistan is holding the Shanghai Cooperation Organization Ministerial, as well as Ministerial level Shanghai Cooperation Organization, Afghanistan contact group meetings. The International Connectivity Conference is taking place in Uzbekistan in the days to come. These events represent very useful opportunity, for sure. We will also maintain very close, very close consultations in these and other formats, as well as bilaterally to find ways to react on the current and future developments which are causing an increasing concern. Overall, uh, the two sides once again reiterated absolutely shared approach to continue extending the Russian-Indian multidimensional strategic partnership bilaterally and multilaterally, for, for which, as you, are, as you surely know, sky is the limit. The visit of Dr. Jaya Shankar was certainly a new important step in this regard. More so, I would like to share one more reason why this year is so special for our times. Next month, we will be celebrating the 50th anniversary of the historic bilateral treaty of peace, friendship and cooperation of 1971. Please uh, follow uh, our events and publications in the web. Thank you very much for your time and kind attention. Please stay safe and well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador, for your comprehensive overview of the recent visit of Dr. Jay Shankar, which was very um, um, encouraging. So thank you so much uh, for your time, uh, despite of your tight schedule. And uh, we will, um, if you don't mind, we will proceed further with the Q&A session. Your Excellency, thank you very much once again for joining us today. So, uh, dear friends, um, um, we had an opportunity to listen to to, to Ambassador, who presented his overview with the, uh, respect of major outcomes of uh, the recent uh, high-level uh, negotiations. Now we we can we are you know free to proceed to, with the Q and A session. Uh, some questions we have received uh, from you in advance, and uh, uh, let me briefly. Uh, comment on each of them to, to the extent I'm in a position to do so. Afterwards, of course, uh, you will be uh, free to raise uh, any other issues. Uh, uh, at the same time, I would uh, uh, just to, to, to save time, <laughs> uh, would prefer not to repeat myself after probably uh, uh, making some particular comments because you know most of the questions we received were related to the situation in Afghanistan so uh, let me start you know making some uh, uh, making some you know more details available to you uh, with regard to the Russian approach what is going on in uh, the neighboring country so we can clearly state that this is a critical moment for uh, Afghanistan which uh, however uh, doesn't have a military solution. Uh, as uh, far as we all remember that under the mediation of the US, uh, there were steps planned for normalization 
launching a political process and reaching agreement on transitional period and then future parameters of Afghanistan. These aspects are to be implemented by Afghans themselves. Uh, everyone welcomed um, uh, such understanding between the US and Taliban and we stand as well in favor of implementation of these commitments. Um, because um, the military activities without political process are worrying since um, um, instability can easily cross the borders. Um, uh, what we can do in our best efforts is to motivate the parties to, parties to respect their commitments and to uh, start negotiations, intra-Afghan uh, talks. Uh, events in uh, Tajikistan and Uzbekistan, which were mentioned by Ambassador, namely uh, the SCO ministerial meeting and the session of the SCO Afghanistan contact group, as well as infrastructure conference in Uzbekistan, uh, are believed to send a strong message uh, to all Afghans on the need to start talking seriously between each other. Um, at this event, we also expect that Afghani officials uh, would share their vision in this regard. Russia and India are committed to close dialogue and active monitoring the situation. Our multilateral engagements are very instrumental in this regard. Uh, there were also questions about the cross-border terrorism. Uh, of course, um, uh, the ministers in Moscow uh, shared their perspective and discussed the issue in details. We have uh, um, a common approach to, uh, the, on the threat of international terrorism. We promote this approach while dealing uh, with the issue in relevant uh, formats. First of all, the United Nations, BRICS, SCO, and relevant bilateral mechanisms. Russia enjoys an advantage to stay in touch with all parties in the region and uh, we are ready to use the potential of the CSTO, which is the um, Collective Security Treaty Organization comprising of six parties, namely Russia, Belarus, Armenia, Kazakhstan, Tajikistan and uh, Kyrgyzstan. Uh, and watching the situation so that we could uh, timely support our allies. Uh, by uh, providing necessary military equipment, as well as by intensifying joint exercises. Uh, role of India and other regional players is uh, uh, certainly very important. India has huge interests in Afghanistan and it's up to India basically to decide in what particular way to be uh, involved and to what extent. Uh, what can be noted that India is cutting out active regional diplomacy, and that's uh, very encouraging. Um, uh, Taliban is a current reality in Afghanistan. It's a party of inter-Afghan uh, talks, which we believe should be a solution for normalization and establishment of an inclusive government, which should be um, uh, involving all major ethnic groups. Um, uh, the recent news about the next uh, meeting in Doha between the representatives of the government and Taliban is uh, again encouraging. Um, the uh, inclusive government of Afghanistan would be in a position to be able to ensure that uh, the country remains independent, sovereign, united, peaceful and democratic. Um, uh, on the, uh, 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 let us also uh, proceed from the, from the uh, understanding that, um, uh, let us, I would like to stress that uh, currently uh, the most important thing which could be done and should be done to the extent possible, uh, this is we should motivate the parties to launch early intra-Afghan Talks, meaningful discussion that uh, should bring uh, the uh, uh, Afghanistani settlement to the next very practical uh, level. So that is more or less, uh, uh, I, I was trying to, to cover uh, the uh, particular issues which we have received 
um, with respect to uh, to the preparation of this press briefing. All the that was pertaining to, to Afghanistan. Again, we are uh, we are ready to comment a couple of you know uh, words about the question on the um, uh, tourism and um, um, the number of visas which we are issuing to to the Indian uh, citizens. So uh, let me uh, inform you that um, since January 25 this year, when uh, the air communication was reopened and um, uh, the tourism and other tra travels were allowed between the countries, uh, we have issued more than 10,000 visas um, altogether. Uh, most of, uh, of the visitors are traveling with tourist purposes, more than 5,000. The second big biggest category is students, more than 3,000. So the remaining category uh, is uh, comprised of, uh, of uh, business people, uh, you know, most, of, uh, most of all. Of course, it is not the figures which we were used to, because um, uh, because uh, because of obvious circumstances. Last year, uh, air communication and all the uh, travels were restricted, if not if not cancelled, for for a moment of the initial stages of the spread of uh, of the pandemic COVID-19. Uh, since, uh, for example, in um, uh, 2019. Uh, we have uh, issued uh, around 60,000 visas. So that's, uh, that's for, 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 for your record, for your statistics as well. So, and uh, there was a question about uh, the vaccination tourism in Russia. Uh, well, um, uh, let us put it in that, that way. In uh, recent months, the president of uh, Russia, President Vladimir Putin, uh, announced that vaccination would be possible for foreign citizens in Russia as well. And as of now, vaccination centers in Moscow are open only for those, for those with residence and work permits. That's up to the moment. And um, let me also make a small comment on, the, uh, on our defense cooperation. Um, in fact, uh, I would not come into much details on that because all the you know uh, projects you are mentioning in your wires, uh, it confirms that you are very well aware about the uh, the current directions of our joint engagements in this regard and the uh, current projects, deals, amounts, deadlines, uh, all that you know. It is not changing, and let me just put that. Um, you know, our defense ties remain in an upward trajectory, encompassing all possible areas of uh, um, uh, mutual engagements, including real technology sharing and uh, industrial cooperation. In line of preparations for big events this year, which were also highlighted by Ambassador, including uh, 2 plus 2 meeting, including uh, Defense Intergovernmental Commission, and of course, the planned uh, summit. We maintain an intensive dialogue on all items of our comprehensive agenda. All deals and supplies will be uh, completed according to the schedule. A relevant legal base will be also upgraded. Uh, we expect solid Indian participation in the Navy Day uh, Parade uh, to be held in St. Petersburg later this month. And the MAX air show, which will be also held uh, later this month in the Moscow region in the city of Zhukovsky. So, well, we have a large agenda, a lot of plans, a lot of engagements uh, coming uh, later this year. And we are quite optimistic and quite encouraged uh, by the uh, strong and very um, uh, dedicated dynamics of our you know, engagements and dialogue. So floor is open. Please kindly um, go ahead with the, the particular questions and um, I hope that uh, to some extent, uh, some comments which were made before um, were satisfactory for you. 
not sure if I'm able to, uh, to get into some more details, whatever Afghanistan is concerned. However, well, would be, uh, you know, um, would be trying to do so. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, good afternoon. Uh, this is Sachin from the Times of India. Uh, yes, good afternoon. Hi. Uh, no, I just want to check with you. My question is again about uh, Afghanistan only. I uh, just want to check if you can be a little more specific about uh, what role you see India as playing in Afghanistan. You know, once the uh, U.S. withdrawal is complete, uh, what are your expectations from uh, from India in that regard? And also, since you mentioned the issue of terrorism, I just want to draw your attention to the fact that uh, one of the main concerns which India has uh, about the situation in Afghanistan is that, you know, uh, the Afghan soil is is not used by particularly Pakistan-based forces, you know, terror groups operating out of Pakistan soil uh, against uh, for, for terrorist activities against India. So what is Russia doing to address that concern? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for, for um, um, uh, your question. Um, you see, <laughs> you're asking about what uh, role India can, be, can play. So I think uh, it would be better to check with the Indian side about their role because it's up to India to, to, to analyze and realize the situation and go ahead according to the um, uh, current realities and uh, what um, you know, opportunities are provided by the relevant international mechanism. Obviously, India is a big player in Afghanistan because uh, India has always been uh, supportive of the government in uh, Kabul by, uh, first of all, uh, uh, economic and social assistance. We know how much uh, in Afghanis uh, were trained and um, educated in Indian um, in, in universities. And uh, um, it is also relevant to the uh, defense and military personnel. Then, of course, well, uh, all the uh, Afghani provinces uh, have re uh, received the uh, assistance from India in terms of investment, in terms of implementation of social uh, social uh, projects, uh, um, in infrastructure projects, and uh, um, according to the figures which you are very well aware of, there are more than three billion dollars uh, invested in this regard. So. Um, that means only one thing, that India has a huge interest, and um, uh, that's a, you know, uh, quite a crucial moment for everyone to, uh, to, to uh, remain in a very close touch so that we could um, support the original consensus on, on, on Afghanistan and support the efforts which are to be undertaken by Afghans to shape the government according to the agreements which have been reached uh, before, and uh, we should motivate that. And of course, uh, of course, uh, um, we are and we will be continuing very close coordination and very close uh, consultations with the Indian side, bilaterally and multilaterally. Um, uh, today, uh, the events in um, uh, Tashkent and uh, Dushanbe are very important since it is, they provide a brilliant opportunity to um, uh, to, uh, to discuss the situation in details uh, with participation of the Afghani officials. Uh, because uh, uh, what is really a um, um, unique feature of the, uh, for example, the SEO um, Afghanistan group that uh, Afghanistan is a full-fledged full member of uh, this mechanism. So that it is not only uh, for the countries which are interested in, in, in dealing with the situation in Afghanistan. It is also based on the um, um, participation on, um, uh, in practical cooperation uh, of the Afghani side and uh, to respond better to the requirements which Afghanistan is um, uh, having. Uh, involving Afghanistan not only to receive uh, donorship, uh, the donor assistance, but actively participate in all the activities in the framework of this contact group. So that's why it is it is really uh, a very special occasion. And of course, it would be a good opportunity for everyone to compare notes and to, to uh, um, discuss the ways how we could 
um, uh, um, better monitor the situation and uh, what are the options if uh, the situation would require to to to, uh, to react to react to to the developments so that is uh, uh, something which we can say about uh, this topic and uh, as far as terrorism is concerned of course this is a threat which is one of the biggest challenges in in, in the, for the region uh, our countries are uh, committed to to go ahead to deal with this threat, to eliminate this threat together in the framework of the current institutions. Of course, it is not; it should not be viewed separately from other problems Afghanistan is facing. That also includes uh, the huge amount of drug trafficking, which is, you know, um, um, which which has become uh, one of the major sources of, to support terrorism activities. So, and uh, the critically important is to avoid the situation when this instability, um, not only terrorism, not only um, uh, other threats, but also um, um, extremism and uh, um, uh, radicalism would cross the, the borders. Hello, sir? Yes, please. Yes, it can. Hi, sir. I'm Sidhan from to you, sir. Uh, back again here in Delhi. My first question to you is at the uh, SCO NSA meeting, the Indian NSA had proposed action against Pakistan based terror groups under uh, the SCO framework. Where does Russia stand on it? Will you support India at the SCO when it comes to action against Pak terror groups? Second, uh, my question we know the reports uh, which have come of India engaging with Taliban. Uh, how do you see uh, this development as, uh, uh, will you support it? Will you suggest something? I know it is India's sovereign decision, but as an ally, what would you say? Well, as you know, SCO is a consensus-based organization. And um, with regard to all the proposals uh, which are on the table, they would require discussion of everyone. And um, uh, certainly if India is putting forward this proposal, it, it would require uh, um, very serious attention from all the member states and um, of course if uh, if uh, the Indian side have, have already uh, you know uh, are making the, these proposals in the framework of the current discussion of course let, 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 let us proceed from the understanding that uh, they are considered in a way which is typical for the Shanghai Cooperation Organization in a you know constructive manner and in um, uh, taking into account interests of all the parties uh, concerned. Then, um, of course, when it comes to the uh, contacts between India and Taliban, so it is the uh, Indian sovereign decision, and um, certainly pa Taliban would, uh, is uh, present in Afghanistan um, also in a, in a manner that it is uh, a party of the intra-Afghan talks, and um, certainly it would be useful to, uh, to to deal with everyone in the region so that uh, the national interest would be better ensured. Thanks, sir. Hi, sir. M may I speak? Yes, please. Hi. Hi. The, uh, this is Neelam Matthews. Uh, you must be quite proud of the Brahmos JV. But on another line, uh, regarding space, what will be your support moving forward with this rope? Thank you. Um, uh, I do apologize. I, I do believe that Brahma's issues and space issues are a bit <laughs> different ones. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, my questions are two. Sorry, my apologies. No, well, of course, <laughs> but we, we as uh, uh, diplomats could link everything with everything, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so, and uh, we can take the success, utmost success of Brahma's cooperation and uh, to develop uh, multi-purpose missiles, which are now, are, can be used in, uh, in, a, in, in the format of air-to-air, um, air, air to, uh, um, uh, to, to the, you know, uh, sea and uh, all the other formats, which it, it, it it is. It can be deployed on uh, aircraft. It can be deployed in the uh, warship, warships, and, uh, and, the, and on the land as well. So this successful preparation is a very good example. Then uh, how can we be successful in many other areas? But uh, let us be specific about uh, space. 
particularly because uh, space cooperation, I presume, is having even a uh, much bigger history than than Brahmas. <laughs> so, um, uh, what uh, with regard to space sector? So, and uh, in fact, our cooperation here in uh, this area, this is historic cooperation, and this is one of the best symbols of uh, our uh, special and privileged strategic partnership. Um, it uh, provides uh, a very solid example of how uh, the countries could be um, could work together to transform the potential of space into tangible benefits. Our countries interact actively in the field of satellite navigation through, through the Russian national navigation system, which is called GLONASS, and the Indian system NAVIC, as well as in the development of GCLV, which powers the Chandra 9 2 and upcoming missions of ISRO by providing the cryogenic ro rocket technology. For Indian astronauts, as you are very well aware, we're successfully training, training in, in, in Russia in the framework of the Gaganyan project, the first India's manned space flight. We hope that in the coming years, um, this cooperation would allow our states uh, to benefit more from the joint peaceful space exploration and uh, in, on a wide range of programs including exploration of the moon mars venus as well as study of the sun uh, importantly that uh, this practical cooperation um, is complementing uh, is being complemented by our active efforts in the international arena first of all in the um, um, United Nations and its Outer Space uh, Committee. We maintain in-depth dialogue on the issues of how to promote responsible behavior to prevent arms race in outer space, including various confidence building measures and even draft international treaty, non-placement of weapons and unacceptability of unilateral and confrontational approaches. This is also part of our agenda when it comes to cooperation in the framework of BRICS, where we are also working on the initiatives of, uh, of the establishment of a remote satellite constellation. And thank you so much. And uh, for, I am Nitesh Gautam, I am uh, consulting editor at uh, Envoy Excellency magazine. And first of all, thank you so much uh, for Russian Embassy for inviting us on this uh, web platform. Thank you. And my question is, uh, that there was an emphasis on the talk of regional securities and connectivity in a recent visit of His Excellency, uh, Foreign Minister of India, Dr. Jay Shankar, to Russia. So how is India is going to be directly benefited from these discussions? Mm -hmm. um, it is not only for, uh, for the benefit of India, it is also for the benefit of all countries involved and uh, Russia, first of all. Um, the discussion was because uh, this is a part of our large agenda. We are talking about connectivity uh, uh, long years already, and we have achieved particular results. We have a good common understanding of the need and uh, of the vital importance of uh, the connectivity, which could improve um, in, uh, cooperation between our countries, first of all, in terms of trade and economy and uh, you know, uh, improving supply chains between us, because uh, this is uh, one of the limitations which is posed in order to, uh, uh, limitation which, which should be removed in order to expand our mutual uh, trade. We are talking about um, uh, international uh, transport corridor north-south, uh, which uh, we are working on very hard to, uh, to make it uh, more efficient and to, to start uh, operation, uh, 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 operating uh, in, in full power then we are, um, for, you know, very soon we are going to, to, to get the first visibility report uh, regarding the Vladivostok Chennai Maritime Sea Road. Then, um, if you remember uh, as well, uh, Dr. Jayashankar mentioned Northern Sea Road, 
uh, when he was in Moscow uh, in the context of uh, connectivity, because it would also represent a very good option for the countries from the Pacific region to reach uh, Europe and uh, Atlantic region in general using uh, this uh, maritime sea road because it would uh, uh, tremendously reduce transportation costs. Uh, all the countries are very much welcome in, in uh, participation in, in, in this project by participating in some investment initiatives, infrastructure initiatives. Um, um, in this regard, let, uh, let us also not forget that Russia is chairing Arctic Council this year and India is a, an observer state, is very much welcome to actively uh, join the relevant uh, discussions and uh, projects within the Arctic Council. At least, uh, well, let rest assured that Russia uh, always welcomes the active Indian participation in that part of the world as well. And uh, importantly, the connectivity, uh, which we are also discussing in the framework of the uh, future uh, cooperation in a broader way between India and uh, the Eurasian space, between the Eurasian Economic Union, uh, we are going to uh, proceed further for the uh, first practical round of negotiations on the FTA, because it would be very instrumental in terms of how we could you know, remove barriers in mutual trade and expand you know, market access. Uh, it would be really very helpful. So that's, uh, these uh, um, benefits are obvious. And uh, uh, that is natural that our ministers discuss this topic also. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Manu Kabi from the Economic Times, uh, I had a question, uh, you know, uh, like we discussed earlier, uh, there's been a lot of uh, joint discussions between Russia and India on Afghanistan. I think we are working closely together to ensure the country is a safe future. You know, in that context, the uh, Afghan ambassador has said in India also that air support will be a vital element in ensuring stability remains there. And we've seen in the past that India and Russia have worked together in this field, you know, given the unique composition of the Afghan forces in which they operate Soviet equipment. Well, and you know, India's expertise in teaching them, there is a, a lot of scope for joint work between India and Russia. Uh, do you think it's a possibility of cooperation uh, between India and Russia and Afghanistan in the future? So that is um, something which uh, we have already discussed in many aspects about you know, how our countries can cooperate uh, with each other. So what, uh, as far as I can understand you in a correct way, so you are talking about the military support, right? Um, yes, in particular air support, uh, because that's the one element they look more at, helicopters, fighter jets. Well, uh, uh, in, fact, uh, in fact, we have got some uh, real experience uh, uh, in this regard in Afghanistan, uh, um, uh, also by supporting the Afghan forces. At the same time, uh, let us be very clear. Currently, the situation um, um, doesn't require any uh, other for foreign uh, military involvement in Afghanistan. At least, uh, we are not considering this option at the moment for the time being. First of all, we will be uh, acting through the CSTO. This is a collective security treaty organization by supporting our allies to 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 fortify their borders in Afghanistan if it would be required. So currently we are closely watching the situation and um, it would be important for all of us to maintain a very close touch and coordination so that we could react timely if any threats is evolving, uh, you know, and uh, it would be uh, crossing the borders. So uh, as, as, uh, to the best of my knowledge, there is uh, uh, no um, uh, no discussion on the military intervention. Although you rightly said uh, India has experience in training uh, uh, the army personnel and uh, uh, you know, the same experience uh, Russia is having to the huge extent. So uh, all, all options are possible, but currently, so we are doing what we are doing. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hi, I'm Priya Natarajan from Diplomacy and Beyond Plus. Uh, my question is, uh, His Excellency had already covered uh, regarding 2 plus 2 ministerial uh, dialogue. Uh, in addition to that, um, you know, very recently, uh, as one of the significant moments between Russia and India has been the construction 
of the Kundakalam nuclear power plant. So how do you think this is going to further add momentum to the bilateral strategic partnership? Thanks. Thank you. Um, Kundakalam nuclear power plant is um, quite a historic project. So we are very proud to for um, its successful implementation is uh, you are very well aware there was a ceremony of uh, the first concrete laid um, uh, there to, uh, for the construction of the fifth block of the Kudan Kulan uh, nuclear power project so the Russian design. Uh, it is um, not limited to the current plans. Of course, we, we have roadmaps and other um, forward-looking uh, documents for the long-term cooperation, which are also uh, provide for uh, uh, for continuation of this successful partnership um, on the uh, other side, on the Indian territory. We are in a close touch with the Indian government on that, and we are very interested to uh, to uh, to get the clarity in this regard as well because we have to to continue there is a mutual interest and moreover this project contributes a lot to the indian national energy security especially when it comes to the needs to to follow uh, the uh, commitments uh, in the um, uh, framework of the climate change issues which is now becoming uh, uh, one of the global priorities then uh, certainly two plus two is uh, in fact um, would be in a position to discuss any any issues and not only Kudan Kulam because uh, Kudan Kulam is just one particular area of our successful partnership we have plenty of that it is easier to mention uh, the topics uh, which we don't discuss and uh, but certainly two plus two is mostly envisaged for um, uh, to support, to give some um, extra additional impetus to the bilateral strategic partnership, because since uh, there are uh, ministers of defense and foreign affairs are uh, uh, involved and uh, they would be discuss something which, which would uh, represent the uh, common agenda for them also. It's important uh, uh, decision, it's important step uh, this year uh, approved by the leaders of the two countries uh, because it would uh, represent a new landmark in our the privileged strategic partnership this event is expected to held to be held before the summit and uh, certainly would represent another uh, opportunity to synchronize watches on uh, the uh, on the developments all over the world especially in the region on the bilateral domain as well as uh, with the view uh, for the uh, to, for, for the uh, preparations to the coming summit uh, before this event to happen um, this uh, uh, we, we will be having a lot of other working level engagements which would help us to prepare this meeting can you can Oh. Hi, uh, this is uh, Shivangi Shukla from News Mobile. Uh, I know you, uh, you touched upon uh, the cooperation between India and uh, uh, Russia when it comes to Afghanistan. You said that, of course, both are keeping a close eye on Afghanistan. Uh, but how, would, uh, how can they really cooperate uh, together to handle the situation in, in Afghanistan? Because it, the ambassador did say that they might need India's help in Afghanistan later on. So, uh, what are the concrete steps that Russia and India can take to cooperate on this? I would prefer not to repeat myself, please. Uh. Yeah, can I oh. ask my question? Yes, please. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Shridhar here from the Asian Age. Uh, <clears throat> so, you did mention that there is no uh, military solution uh, in Afghanistan, and uh, you also ruled out... Uh, you said you're not considering the air power, but um, I just wanted to know the uh, Russian perception uh, in uh, the in what happened in Syria uh, earlier and what is happening in Afghanistan now, because they uh, like uh, the ISIS, the Taliban uh, seems to think that, uh, you know, it's uh, it's very intent on a military solution. 
and uh, so what happens if the if it tries to storm the cities and um, uh, experience has taught us that uh, uh, it was the russian uh, air intervention in syria which uh, actually prevented the fall of damascus so uh, uh, if uh, su such a similar situation uh, would arise in afghanistan where even the russian allies like tajikistan are threatened would russia consider um, um, uh, direct air, air support and uh, a bombardment of the taliban positions uh, like it did in syria against the isis thank you dear shilivar your your question is always as comprehensive as actually it would require the discussion the, during the whole day not only just for this hour which was which is planned for this press briefing although um, um as a continuation of our bilateral <laughs> and uh, uh, friendly interaction of all these relevant topics. Let me, uh, you know, try to to summarize the um, um, the Russian vision on the issues you have touched upon. So let us start with Syria. The Russian intervention in Syria came after the uh, government in Damascus officially requested us to do so. So that made us made our uh, involvement legitimate. Unlike other countries, for example, uh, which are present in the Syrian oil without invitation. That's one uh, thing. Then um, uh, we would uh, hardly um, um, link um, direct comparison between ISIS and Taliban, because uh, as you know, um, uh, both are um, uh, prohibited in Russia as a terrorist organizations. Let's be very clear on that. However, the difference between them is that ISIS has a global outreach. It has no borders. That's why we see that ISIS is present in uh, Syria, in Iraq, and uh, even in the South Asia. That is, uh, by the way, the threat which is uh, one of the major ones which we are very mindful when it comes to the problem of terrorism in Afghanistan. Taliban is limiting itself to the territory of Afghanistan. So it has to establish itself as an uh, Afghani political force. Uh, very interestingly, uh, it's an official analysis, but let me share with you and provide some vision that let's compare better Taliban and Hezbollah. Hezbollah has become a political party. They have uh, some seats in the parliament. People are voting for it. So, well, why not presume that Taliban could be in the same position? So, uh, of course, of course it's, a, it's a philosophical question to some extent, it's a hypothetical uh, situation. Uh, for the time being, uh, since, uh, well, we have to witness first the intra-Afghan stocks to be launched. However, however so well, this comparison is, would be more relevant uh, from the you know, uh, objective point of view. But this is uh, completely unofficial. So, and uh, then when it comes to the particular threat to uh, the neighboring countries in Central Asia uh, from the Afghani soil, um, of course, uh, we would be very seriously considering all options. First of all, since uh, Tajikistan is our uh, ally partner in the framework of the uh, CSTO. First of all, which provides for the military assistance uh, when required. Thank you. Uh, uh, can I ask you a question? Yes, please. Yeah, uh, I'm Dinika Peri with the Hindu newspaper. Uh, so just taking forward Manu Pabi's question earlier on the air support, not from the operational point of view, what you uh, elaborated earlier, but uh, there was a proposal in the past. In fact, Afghanistan had requested India for refurbishing the Soviet era helicopters and transport aircraft lying in their country, unused ones. And uh, India, Indian teams were in Afghanistan assessing uh, what can be done. And then, you know, to have a trilateral arrangement because Russia is the OEM, end of the day. So there was some uh, communication assessment done. So where is now? I mean, it's now all the more critical to enable the Afghan forces. So in that, uh, trilateral cooperation where where or what is happening can you if you can elaborate what happened beyond that and on a second question on a non-afghan 
uh, part on the S400, which uh, the first delivery is likely to happen end of this year. Can you give a definitive time frame as to which uh, when which month do you expect them to arrive? And uh, Indian Air Force teams are in Russia right now, undergoing training. So, uh, if you can again uh, give a number of how many is I mean as part of the agreement, how many personnel or how many teams of will be trained in, in Russia before they come back? Thank you. Thank you, Dinakar. So uh, again, uh, what you are referring to, um, I would really um, bring you back to uh, maybe five or six times earlier when these topics were uh, the you know part of our agenda. That time, the situation the situation was uh, completely different as compared to what we are having today. That I don't think that uh, we are uh, moving towards. Um, uh, the previous arrangements so that you could repeat them again this time at least for the time being so let's be very clear on that so and as for the defense cooperation actually uh, I would really um, re you know uh, would not like to repeat myself before that all these parameters of our cooperation you know very well and uh, let me assure you that they are being implemented um, in a timely manner and very successfully, it requires a lot of coordination and uh, involvement of, uh, from both sides and uh, the contacts are there. And uh, um, um, our ministers, at least Minister Lavrov, if you uh, trace his remarks in, uh, from April, was very uh, clear on that. So you, you may refer to that. So uh, we have no other information at the moment. So, so uh, um, um, uh, um, unless we, we can just reconfirm that uh, both sides are quite committed to not only to uh, complete all the uh, all the um, deals and all the uh, agreements which are under consideration, but also for the new ones, especially when it comes to the uh, to the uh, plans to have a long term program of cooperation to be extended for the next ten years. We hope that this document will be approved uh, this year ago, again. So, but, but before we before we come to the particular question, let us, you know, uh, put it in a way. So let's uh, receive maybe some, you know, uh, um, one or two more questions because of the time constraints. Hope for your understanding. Thank you. Yes, please, the, 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 Mr. Ranjit. Right, sir. Yeah. So this Can is Abhishek Kapoor from Republic TV. Uh, my question is uh, a follow up on what you said. You said Taliban is essentially focused on Afghanistan. But then they had a very very happy coexistence with Al Qaeda, you know, when the first time they came to power, and it led to 9/11. Afghan present Afghan government says that Taliban are backed by at least 32 terrorist organizations. Uh, so, does that potentially change Russian position? Uh, part B of the question is: Does Russia see a role for Pakistan in all the events that are panning out in Afghanistan? What do you mean by the change of the Russian position? The Russian positions have never changed. So well, we are dealing with the realistic uh, situation in Afghanistan. It was very clear and uh, um, it was very clear to the Indian partners also. So um, uh, we uh, uh, believe that uh, all the terrorist organizations um, are out of, you know, uh, I mean, just uh, they are illegal that should be eliminated and we are quite committed to tackle the threat of terrorism in Afghanistan as well. Uh, although um, uh, both um, and uh, uh, Taliban and uh, Al-Qaeda are the organizations which are internationally recognized as terrorist and uh, they are prohibited in Russia also. So there is, I don't see any change in the Russian position. It is consistent with, consistent when it comes to the problem of international terrorism. And of course, we will be, uh, uh, well, let us not mix the, uh, um, uh, the, the situation, which, because it would complicate your impression about, you know, what we are discussing. So um, Taliban is legitimate only when it deals um, uh, with the terrorism in a way that I mean, just to, well, first, uh, let us, uh, you know, uh, realize that it is a was common approach, which was supported by everyone. That um, uh, Taliban should uh, um, deal with the problem of terrorism and other issues, other related issues as well, in order to become legitimate, in order to become delisted, in order to 
uh, you know, to go ahead with uh, the uh, future Afghanistan and creation of the um, uh, inclusive government. So as far as uh, we can uh, understand that uh, they uh, are expressing willingness in this regard. So let us see how real this uh, commitment and uh, well, uh, 